Um, so I briefly described this equation assay that we used to estimate the functions of these mutants. Um, so this is a cartoon of the experimental setup we used to perform the assay. Uh, it has, uh, so uh, there is a rotating disk electrode or RDE which is made of a glassy carbon that is suspended into um, a sample chamber and uh, the and it is uh, and, and the principle of the assay is based on the electro oxidation of norepinephrine. So when norepinephrine is present in the sample chamber and it contacts the RDE or the rotating disk electrode, um, it is oxidized. And uh, the change in oxidation potential of the rotating disk electrode can be measured with respect to a reference electrode and can be recorded by an output device. And um, so. We used cracked uh, cells, uh, not permeabilized cells, which are capable of secreting norepinephrine, and uh, add them to the sample chamber. Uh, so, what is done to these cells so that they are mechanic, they are homogenized, such and uh, and their cytosol is removed, but their membranes are uh, preserved intact during the process, um, and then they are suspended in a physiological buffer and the test factor, which in this case are CAPS mutants, are then added to it um, to test their activity. And uh, this entire cell suspension is put in the sample chamber and then calcium is added to it to trigger exocytosis. And depending on the RDE signal that we get, we will be able to tell whether it increases CAPS uh, function uh, beyond that of the wild type CAPS or whether it reduced CAPS function because um, the amplitude of the signal which is obtained from the experiment is proportional to the number of norepinephrine vesicles released. And the good thing about this assay is that it, is, it has very high sensitivity. So even small quantities of norepinephrine release can be detected. So these are our results from the RDE secretion analysis. Uh, we find that the 957 to 961 alanine mutant, it has almost the same activity as that of wild type. So it is not exactly very interesting. Although this is a surprising finding because we would expect that because it is within the monk homology domain one, it would show some activity. Um, and this uh, second mutant, however, the 1134-1138 alanine mutant, which lay in the C terminal uh, segment of CAPS protein, it did show some reduction in activity in um, as compared to wild type. So it was around 75% activity as of wild type. Um, so uh, this graph again shows the comparison better, as in um, this is the wild type voltage which is recorded, and this is the voltage recorded using the 1134 to 1138 alanine mutant. Um, so the conclusions from the experiments that we've done are that the conserved residues in monk homology domain may be important for proper folding of caps. That is maybe part of the reasons why we observe update distributions of the protein. Um, second is that the secretion assay data that we have suggests that 1134 to 1138 alanine mutant shows reduced activity, but we do not know yet what the exact reason for that is. So more experiments need to be performed uh, before we are able to conclude what is exactly the reason. Whereas is the CAPS 957 to 61 mutant does not reduce CAPS activity in secretion. So it presumably does not lie in the exact snare binding region within the CAPS protein. Um, so these are the references that I've used for making the presentation and acknowledgments to the Corona program, Department of Biotechnology India, uh, Indo-US Science and Technology Forum, and UW Madison for funding my project, uh, to Professor Tom Martin for hosting me in his lab, and to Neil and all members of the Martin lab. They've been extremely helpful and they've offered guidance whenever I've asked for it and the 2011 Corona Fellows and the audience for paying attention.